When it comes to pinball video games, it's hard not to bring up the legendary Devil's Crush, or Devil Crash as it was originally named in Japan. What it lacks in the longevity of adventurous pinball games like Sonic Spinball, or the plenty of options of realistic simulators available today, Devil's Crush more than makes up for it with a fantastically creative board and an incredible assault of both sight and sound. While this might not be the greatest 16-bit pixel art ever made, the board design is absolutely beautiful, with tons of little intricate details here and there. All the skeletons, monsters, cultists, and even the stone tile work give this great look of a demonic medieval setting. While the old calculator-style LCD display along the top shows off your score, and even displays messages while adhering to the display's limitations. There's also a multiplier counter that's recessed into the board and gradually lights up as progress is made. This kind of stuff can easily be taken for granted, but I don't think it should be understated that the designers put together a pinball board that is impossible to exist, but still doesn't feel that far off from reality. Almost as if this thing has popped out from another dimension. While presentation alone shouldn't be what convinces you to play a game, Devil's Crush simply cannot be brought up in the slightest without mentioning that soundtrack. 16-bit though it may be, it's insanely rocking and never gets old. While a few different tracks are used for the bonus rooms and the title screen, you'll always want to return to the main table just to go back to that song. I'm telling you, the best of Castlevania, Kirby, Sonic, Donkey Kong, this one track from Devil's Crush stands tall with the rest. If you've never heard this song before, you're seriously missing out. As for the gameplay itself, it's a little janky. The ball physics don't feel right at all. You do get used to it with practice, but it's always a struggle to put the ball where you want it, even by usual pinball standards. The ball also has a tendency to zip right through the board faster than it can be reasonably reacted to. Again, more so than usual pinball standards. There is a tilt function, but I don't think the direction can be manipulated, and it seems hardly noticeable. I could be wrong on this, I'm no expert on this game, but this is one of the hardest pinball games I've ever played as far as influencing where the ball goes. Different objectives on the board, usually indicated by a green arrow, allow for passage to higher sections on the board, as well as access to bonus rooms. Once you're in a bonus room, you're tasked with destroying multiple targets for a huge score boost. So it's generally a priority to get yourself in these rooms as often as you can, because even if you're immediately thrown out, it's not like you lose a ball, so it's a pretty safe bet. The game generally progresses in trying to access bonus rooms as often as possible, all without losing your ball and subsequently losing your score multiplier. Shockingly, there's actually an ending to this game. It's achieved by maxing out the score, just shy of 1 billion points. The best I can do is 42 million, so I know I'm never going to be able to do this. At least not without cheats. On top of an insane goal to achieve, there's only one board and just a one-player, two-player option. That's it. This is what makes the game a little tough to recommend. There's not a whole lot of content here. What little there is here is fantastic, and if you have the opportunity to play this game at least once, regardless of whether or not you're a fan of pinball games, then you simply must jump on it just for the experience alone. However, if you're going to pay money for it, then that's a bit of a different story. I would more heartily recommend something like Sonic Spinball, Kirby's Pinball Land, or Metroid Prime Pinball, because in those games there's more of an adventure there. There are multiple boards, special objectives to achieve, and even boss fights. There's a real sense of progression in these games beyond just getting a high score. 
As for more traditional fare, the likes of Zen Pinball and the Pinball Arcade have made a name for themselves as realistic simulators, ones where the ball actually behaves properly. As such, Devil's Crush is a little outclassed these days, and there's not a ton of reason to revisit it aside from the novel setting and presentation. Unfortunately, Devil's Crush never got the same remake treatment that its prequel did in the form of Alien Crush Returns. Something along those lines could have really been a big deal. But anyway, if you're a huge fan of pinball, then you're missing out if you don't mess around with this game at least once. As for everyone else, check it out if this interests you. And if not, then at least check out the great music. Thanks for watching my review on Devil's Crush, and Happy Halloween!